Hey everyone, this is Aria and I wanted to welcome you to my first tutorial of 2022. I've been using geometry nodes a lot for my recent collection Emularia and this would be way too much to break down in one tutorial. I've decided to show you how I created the tail and the arc going between the heart and the butterfly. And the reason I chose to teach this part specifically is because it took me a little bit to figure out how this actually worked. And through the help of some other great tutorials, I was able to figure out a method that worked for me. If we just quickly jump into Blender, you'll see that we have our effect here, what appears to be points moving along this curve. And if I was to just jump over to the modifiers tab and turn off the geometry nodes, you'll see that the base of this is just a simple bezier curve, which you can add by hitting shift A, curve, and select bezier. You'll notice that if I go over to the geometry nodes and add a new geometry nodes, that we just get this simple basic setup where we can add a bunch of things in between. But if I just quickly go to geometry nodes number 10, you'll see that it immediately adds the same geometry node system that we had on our other curve. And if I hit play again, you'll see that it pretty much has the exact same effect. And the great thing about geometry nodes is it doesn't matter where your curve is, it will act the same way. So it's very procedural. As well, if I tab and go into edit mode and move these points, you'll see that our geometry node system adapts to the curve itself. The other thing that I want to point out is this is not actually points moving along a curve. And that was part of the reason why it took me a long time to figure this out because I kept looking for methods to move points along this curve, but in this case we're actually using the scale value to create that effect. So if I was to remove this right here and hit play, you'll see that absolutely nothing is happening. Then just looking into the node tree, you'll notice here that there's two separate pathways here. This is our input here and you see we have one branch going out from here to the top and one going out to this second area here. Then you'll notice that at the end we join them together and send them to the output. If I was to remove this from the system from now, you'll see that we've just got this base layer here. Then if I was to do the opposite, you'll see that we've just got our icospheres here. So let's just do a quick overview of what's going on here and then we'll delete this all and create our own. The first thing that we're doing is taking our original curve and we're setting it to this node here which is turning it into a mesh. And if I was to mute these two things, you can see what's happening here. And you can see that what it's doing is basically taking this profile and wrapping it around this curve. So you don't need to have your resolution this high. You could have it to something a little bit lower. This is just what worked for my piece specifically. If I move over to split edges and unmute that, you'll see that something happens separating all of this geometry based on how many edges there are. So if I was to lower this now, you'll see that this lowers also. Then next node in the tree, if I unmute that, you'll see immediately our effect. And essentially what this is doing is taking the faces and scaling them down. So if I was to mute this, you'll see that it kind of changes shape. And the reason for that is because it's taking just this singular face and scaling it down, as opposed to taking each individual face and scaling it down. And that's it for the top. So if I hook up the bottom here, You'll see that the first thing we do is resample the curve, and the reason we do that is because if we mute that, there's only a few points. It's basically using all of the points that were on my original curve. But if we add this on, essentially what this will do is take the length of this curve and resample it evenly. Then we move on to the instance points, and this is where we're adding our sphere. So if I was to remove this, you'll see that everything disappears, and why that is, is because it's taking all of the points from this curve, and it's telling it to add instances on those points. But of course we need something to actually instance, so we're going to take our icosphere and add it into the instance slot. And then finally, this is where all the magic happens, where it makes it look like it's moving. But the trick is it's not actually moving. If I was to zoom in here, you'll notice at the end here, if I go back and forth, that these points are actually just scaling up and down. And the reason why they look like they're moving is because we're using this node here, which essentially creates this repeating pattern. And as we move it along the curve, and then over here, we're activating that with the frame count. 
If I was to quickly remove this here, you'll see that everything is the same, and if I hit play, nothing is happening. You could hit Shift A and add a Musgrave texture, and if I take the height and hook that into the scale, you'll see that it has some effect based on the noise pattern of the Musgrave texture. If I was to set this to 4D, you could see that I can use the W function here, and you could either keyframe this or you could add a value node. Now you'll see that the noise pattern is changing, which is affecting these, and they almost look as if they're moving back and forth along the curve. Then again, if I hook this back up and hit play, you can start to see what's going on here. So now that I've done an overview, we're going to delete this and we're going to start right from the beginning. So let's hit Shift A and we're going to go to Curve and we're going to add a Bezier Curve. Now you'll notice right away that if I hit Tab, there's only two points and we could hit right click and click Subdivide to add some more points, but instead we're going to do everything within Geometry Nodes. So back into Object Mode, let's hit New and you'll see that we've got a fresh little Geometry Node set up here. And the first thing we want to do is create our top row and then we'll move into the instancing. So the first thing we want to do is turn this into a mesh. So if I hit Shift A, you can search for Curve and type in 2 and you'll get this Curve to Mesh node. You can also just go into the Curve here and Curve to Mesh. And of course nothing is happening because we need some type of profile. So let's go Shift A and again we're going to type in Curve and we're going to search for Curve Circle or again you could just go into Curve Primitives and select Curve Circle. Let's grab this and we're going to hook it up. You just want to change the radius to something like 0 0.01. The next thing we want to do is split the edges. So we're going to search for Split Edges. Then if we zoom in you'll see that we've got all our edges split. You'll also notice that we've got what looks to be sections in our curve, and the reason for that is, again, if we go into edit mode, we could subdivide this and fix that. But since we're using geometry nodes, let's do everything inside of the node tree. And since we're using curves, we're going to hit shift A and we're going to type sub, and then you'll see there's a subdivide curve node. So let's just drop that in before the curve to mesh, and now we can utilize that to subdivide our curve. And again, this is a much better way to do things because we can always go back and change this. We're not set in stone. The only reason I had more points is because my shape needed to go into a very specific pattern. So there are times that you may need to just use the subdivide and grab these different points. And then the final thing we need to do is just scale our elements. So we're going to search for scale and drop that in. And then the default mode is face, which we can leave it to that. And you can scale this to whatever you want, but I'm just going to type in 0.8. And now you'll see that we've got a separation between all of our little faces. Alright, so now we're going to work on the next part of our system. And the main thing that we're doing here is we're adding instances. So we're going to search for instance and select instance on points. Then we're just going to take our original curve and hook that into points. Then we want to hook this up to our system, but you'll notice if I hook this into the geometry that it takes the place of our top system. So the quickest way to fix that is just add a join geometry node, and then you can add both of these in. And for now we're just going to remove the top just so that we can focus on the bottom. You'll notice that everything again has disappeared, so we're going to hit Shift A, and we can search for Icosphere, which you can also find in the mesh primitives. And of course, if I hook this into the instance, you're going to see these massive icospheres. So let's make those a little bit smaller. Say something like 0.01 for now. And that's a little bit small, so let's just change that to 0.1. And if I was to just toggle the geometry nodes on and off, you'll see that they're at the start and the end of our curve. And the reason for that is, if I go into edit mode, you'll see that we only have two points, one and two. So this node can only instance two different points. So the next thing we want to do is to add more points to our curve, and the best way to do that is to resample our curve. So just search for resample, and we're going to drop that in here, and you'll notice right away that we have a count of 10. And if you were to count all these, you'll see that there's 10 different icospheres here. I'm just going to add about 100 for now. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so that we can see them all. I'm going to zoom in and now you'll see that we've got 100 different icospheres along our curve. 
So at this point, we've really got most of our effect done. The only thing we need to do now is create the movement effect, which again, like I said before, isn't actually the points of moving, but just in the way that we scale them. One important node that we need to use here is the index node. And you'll see if I was to plug this straight into the scale that we've got this weird looking thing. But essentially what it's doing is taking the length of the curve and telling it to scale up the further along the curve it goes. So you'll notice at the beginning of the curve, the size is zero. And as it moves along the curve, it gets larger and larger until the very end of the curve where we have this giant icosphere. So there's a couple ways we could change that. We could just change the size of the icosphere by maybe adding in an additional zero. And now you'll see the effect a little bit easier. And because we have this index, we can actually utilize this to create the effect of the icospheres moving along this curve. So the next node that we want to add is a math node. And we're going to add it right between the index and the scale. Then we'll click here and we're going to select modulo. And now that we've added that, it's almost as if things have disappeared again, but that's actually not the case. Things are just really tiny, so I'm just going to scale this up a bit and you'll start to see things come through. As well, I'm just going to change this value here to 0.05 just to bring the radius up a bit and now you'll see this effect working a little bit better. So something like that and again this is going to be depending on what you're creating and what effect you're trying to get. You'll notice now if I hit play still nothing is happening at all and the reason for that is this node is not actually moving anything it's just basically a pattern that it's creating. So one of the final nodes that we need to add is another math node so I'm going to type in math and you'll see as soon as I drop this in we had something that looked like movement and the reason for that is it's basically just shifting it over by 0.5. So now you'll see that when I change this value it appears as if it's moving over but again if you look really closely once it gets to the end of the curve you'll notice that it's actually not moving it's just shrinking. This one is going from very small to very large and so on and so on. So if we animate this value, you'll see that we start to get our effect. And at this point, we've basically created our effect. I added a lot more nodes to fix some of the things like this issue that you see here. So for example, you could duplicate this node here and change this to subtract. And I'm just going to set this to something like minus 100. And now you'll notice that it's a little bit more uniform. Then the final thing that we want to do is just animate this value. So of course you could just set keyframes for this, but let's just keep this procedural and add one more node. So if you hit shift A and you type in scene, you'll see there's a node here called scene time and you can pick either option. But in this case, I'm just going to use the frame value and hook it into our value. And when I hit play, you'll see now that we've got our animation working. Finally, I can just add this back into our tree. Then I'm going to scale this down just a little bit and then just scale this up and now you'll see that we have our final effect. If you want to support me, you can always head over to Patreon and sign up to become a member. And I'd also love for you to follow me on Twitter. I also plan to have some tutorials on how I'm utilizing my artwork to generate income. Okay, I hope to see you soon. Bye!